Constructed in 1963, tourists and locals alike recognize the arch as the gateway to the West. It's the tallest United States monument at 630 feet in height. As well, it spans exactly the same amount at 630 feet across. I'm here with Pan Sam Filippo, who is the program manager for the Gateway Arch National Park. Pam, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, my pleasure. The arch is such a unique piece of architecture, and it's also a symbol of our great city of St. Louis. Yes. But many people do not know, how did it come to be? So back in the 1930s, in the midst of the depression, there were civic leaders in the, uh, in the city who uh, saw the riverfront as being dilapidated, nobody was using it, buildings were um, in disrepair, and they also wanted to increase jobs in the city at the time, and so they, uh, one of them had a vision to create a memorial to Jefferson, President Jefferson's um, addition of the Louisiana Purchase and to westward expansion. In 1935, President Roosevelt signed le legislation making, um, it's called Jefferson National Expansion Memorial at the time, uh, to honor Jefferson's vision for the country's westward expansion. Nobody had an idea of a, an arch at that time. They didn't know what that memorial would look like, but they began uh, cleaning up the riverfront, demolishing those buildings, and then in the 1940s, after World War II, uh, they uh, held an international design competition. Wow. And there were over 170 entries mm -hmm. from all over the world for what that memorial should look like. And in 1947, Aero Saarinen, uh, a Finnish architect, uh, was the, the winning design, which is today's Gateway Arch. Our next stop, we're gonna go up in the tram to the top, get a bird's eye view of our beautiful city of St. Louis. Thank you so much for your time and information. You're a wealth of knowledge on everything here, <laughs> and I look forward to exploring the museum as well. Thank you, I think you'll enjoy it, and we encourage everyone to come on down and, and check it out. If you haven't been down here for a while, you will be surprised at the changes. <laughs> I definitely am. So the inventor of the tram system, Dick Bowser, actually had no formal engineering training and was a college dropout. His family owned an elevator company in Illinois and they were given two weeks to design the system and the system is based on not only an elevator, but a Ferris wheel. I'm here with Katie Laid, who's a park ranger for the Gateway Arch National Park. Katie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, I'm so excited. So why was it so important to incorporate universal design with the renovation of the museum? So when designing the new museum, we had universal design in mind, and we were trying our best to make everything accessible for every visitor who wants to come and visit our new museum. This was created with universal design in mind as well. So there are accessible spaces for people who may be using wheelchairs, different heights they can fit as they're coming and looking at the galleries. So our goal is to have everyone be welcome. Thank you again so much for your time today and highlighting some of the amazing things at the newly renovated museum. Of course, thank you for coming today. Yes, and I hope everybody else gets a chance to come out and visit. I hope you enjoyed our tour today of the Arch. I'm Kim Jones, and we'll see you next time on The American Dream.